So today we are up early and we're interviewing Arthur Slade and Kurt Kirschmeyer, two really good authors. And we're basically going to Saskatoon to the McNally Robinson bookstore. And well, we just don't like that place. Plus we like those authors, authors too. Mm -hmm. so they're really good. And a tiring day ahead of us. We're about to go to the Valley Robinson Bookstore to interview Kurt Kirschmeyer and Arthur Slate. Let's go. Arthur Slade and Kurt Kirschmeyer. Arthur and Kurt both write young adult fiction. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Can each of you give us a brief bio for those who don't know, do not know you? We'll start with Arthur. Oh, a brief bio. Uh, let me see. I was born in Moose Jaw, raised in southwest Saskatchewan on a ranch, came up here for university, started writing books, and I had to write seven books before my first one was published. So it took me a long time to figure it out how to write books properly. And then ever since then, every book I've, I've written has been published, so I feel very lucky. And I was born here in Saskatoon. I moved away, lived in a couple small towns in the province, and then moved back here. Started writing when I was in my 20s and just had my first book published two months ago. What inspired you to start writing? Oh, you know who I, I, I blame for this? I blame for turning me into a writer as a teacher. I was a teacher <laughs> who gave me 100% on a short story. And it's the only time in my life I've had 100%, but I thought, hey, that's pretty good. 100%, I must be really good at that. And Still, it took me 10 more years before I actually got published. So anyway. Um, I didn't start until I was in my mid-20s. I wrote when I was a kid, but for some reason I just stopped. And then I started reading more when I was in my mid-20s, and that just made me want to start writing again. Who are some of your writing influences? My biggest influence is probably Ray Bradbury, also Stephen King, Robert McCammon. For middle grade writers, I would say Kate D. Canola is a big influence. So I, I'm going to steal all yours because Ray Bradbury yeah. it was a big, uh, it's an American writer and then he just writes really wonderful, fantastical stuff, um, was, was a big influence. And so was Stephen King because I, I read him when I was younger. But also I was big into science fiction, so Robert Heinlein. And I have to, I have to say J.R.R. Tolkien, even though I don't write a lot of fantasy, but when I read, first read or had the Hobbit read to me in grade four, it was just like, this is the most amazing book ever. So I think that helps influence me to become a writer. What are some of your non-writing influences? Uh, you know, I'd have to say heavy metal. That's that's my non-writing influence because um, I listen to Iron Maiden a lot. And are you going to run away now? <laughs> no, I'm Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. <laughs> Iron Maiden. Right, right on. My world is so I, I, I love it. <laughs> I apologize for that. I love any, any anybody who can tell a story like that. And Iron Maiden, of course, has a 14-minute song about the rhyme of the ancient mariner. So there, there's someone who influences me. Plus, Tom just ran, rants and raves on and on about how heavy, heavy metal, metal, metal or rock and roll is better than all my music. It is. Just rants and raves every single day. I'm a heavy metal fan, too. So. <laughs> Uh, it's your own number in this conversation. <laughs> I like other music though too. Yeah. Just when I'm writing, I want something that's really fast. When did you realize you wanted to be a writer? Um, I think I got serious about it after I sold my first short story. I mean, I was already interested in it, but that was when I thought maybe I really can do this. I think for, for me, it, it, uh, it was when I got 100%. I really thought that I, I would, that's what I wanted to be. And, and when I got that mark, um, it's the only thing in my life I can brag about is that one mark. But anyway, um, 
I, I was in grade 11, and that's when people started asking you what you're going to become. And I started answering, I'm going to be a writer. And they said, but what are you going to do for a living? <laughs> and uh, I, that's what made me go to university, is I wanted to go and just learn more about English and about writing and um, hopefully get better at it. How long does it take you to write a book? You know, it, it really varies. Uh, my books are all sorts of different lengths. So some, uh, the shortest has been about three months, which but that book was maybe only 100 pages. But the longest was three years, and that was a book that was set in World War One, and I just had to do lots of research. So that took me a lot of time. I think on average, it's probably about a year. That's kind of a hard question to answer because sometimes I'll start a book and I'll work on it for a while, and then I'll set it down and I'll work on something else and I'll pick it back up again. So start to finish The Absence of Sparrows took me seven years to finish. What would you say is your interesting writing quirk? Uh, well, for me, um, it's my treadmill desk, which is, it's a very, it's a very strange thing in that I decide that I just wanted to walk all the time. I didn't want to sit. So whenever I, I sit down to, no, I don't sit down to write a book. I stand up to write a book and I have this treadmill and I have a desk on top of it. My computer's right there and yeah, I just turn it on and start walking. Research, so we know that. And you did some research? Yeah. I don't know if I have really any quirks. I, I don't listen to loud music like her. I usually want complete silence. So I put on noise cancelling headphones, turn them on, and that's, that's usually how I read. How do books get published? I feel this way. <laughs> that's that's, that's a great great mystery. I, yeah, I've been wondering for that. I think like with, the, with, the, with the publishers, what they, what they do is we send the, our book either through an agent or ourselves to a publisher. They look at it and they say, yeah, we really like this. And they get us to edit it, so we have to go over it sometimes three or four times, sometimes eight, nine, ten times. And that's through every line, making sure it's perfect. And then it goes through another set of editors who again go through it all to make sure everything's spelled properly. And then it finally goes, it gets printed, and it gets sent out to all the stores. Kind of, If you're lucky and you have a really good deal, it goes all around the world, and that's, that's really kind of a neat thing. Where do you get your information or ideas for your books? Um, all over, really. Sometimes I'll be just researching something I'm interested in, like uh, legends or myths, and that will spark an idea. Well, I, I read a lot of history, so that sometimes helps me, especially if what I'm writing is, has a historical background to it. But the thing I, I actually like most, and I assume this happens to you too, is that sometimes ideas will just come out of nowhere. It's just, I'm not even thinking about whatever it is, and um, suddenly I'll just get this image of something happening. You go, oh, that's an idea. I should like write this down, you know, crazy thing happens. And then more crazy things happen, mm -hmm. and and that I can't always explain where it no, comes you, from. Yeah, sometimes you just can't. How do you both come up with such freaky ideas? <laughs> well, That's what I've been waiting for. I've always been interested in like supernatural mysteries, you know, all the occult stuff, ghosts and UFOs and all that cool creepy stuff. <laughs> I think I, I'm the same in that I, whenever I read a story. Uh, and, and when I'm creating a story, I like it when it takes a, a darker turn. And not that I necessarily like the gore as much as I like the suspense. And so that's when I'm writing, when when something, especially if I'm writing something that's supposed to be scary, I want <coughs> I want people to feel like they've they, they're just got onto a roller coaster and they're going all around this crazy roller coaster and then they get off and go, oh, that's okay, you know, I survived. So that's the feeling. Uh, what do you like to do when you're not writing? I do a lot of nature photography. That's probably what I'm most interested in when not writing. Lots of bird photography. I like uh, obviously reading. I read a lot. Yeah, I read a lot too. And, and you should really see his bird photography on Instagram. It's amazing. Or nature photography, I should say. And um, I, I listen to heavy metal. I'm sorry to bring that up again. That's, that's what I do in my spare time too. Or watch way too much Netflix when I'm not reading. What was one of the most surprising things you learned in creating your books? So, we hope you enjoyed part one. This interview was so awesome. There's a second part. In the second part, we talk about the most interesting things they discovered while writing books, why Arthur used hunchbacks, and how social media has affected writers, has affected writers, what their work habits are like, and we do, we do some, some complex, complex treadmill math, math or, or Jewish.
Like, like subscribe, buy merch, please. We also, all, we also ask some questions other writers sent us. Kitty Power. Read the second part. Ink says. Not read, but watch. Or listen. Watch the second part, please. Thank you. <laughs>